Hi, this is Sherry Veronica, and with me on Naked Departure Radio today is Jewel. She is having a monumental environmental situation happening to her where she lives, and no matter how much she has gone to the authorities in Barbados, no one seems to be listening. So I want to welcome Jewel so she can tell her story, and maybe, maybe you can see a thread that resonates with you because I believe everything she says. That's Let me get that out there from the beginning. I believe Jewel and everything she's saying to me today. So now we are on radio and she's going to tell you her side of the story. Jewel, say hi to everyone. Yes, please. <laughs> so you can go. Hi, everyone. Yeah, you can tell your story. So uh, let me just explain how the land situation. I live in San Andrew. The land is family land, it's my dad's land, he's deceased. When I'm by my home and I'm facing the road, my sister is on the left, my brother is on the right. The land is sloped, so I am in the bottom, okay? Now, my brother and sister-in-law decided that they are no longer going to connect with water pipes, but they are going to let the water run onto my property. I saw it happening, I erected a wall, a retainer wall, in 2000, let me see, 2015. And then I dug a gutter. You understand? Mm -hmm. So from there, the water kept coming down, kept pouring, kept pouring, coming down. Now, my brother and sister-in-law, and I, we don't speak. I start speaking to them like 2007 because of things they did, and then lies they tell. Okay. I called the inspector in 2021. So that, around that time, COVID was rampant in Barbados. So they sent out a trainee because they started to like train others to um you know to do the job to you know keep up to, to yes. help the work. Yes. So this trainee guy, he from closer here. So he came out. He came to me. He took my complaint. Then he went into the yard with my brother and sister. My brother and sister shared a yard at that time. Anyway, they went in the yard. He spoke to my brother's voice because my brother was not here. He said all the waste water pipes were disconnected. The kitchen water, the bathroom water, the washing machine. Everything was just running down by me. And it was also going under my sister's house and under her house was like a swamp. Okay? Now he come back, he tell me, he spoke to them. He told her she had to connect the EV pipes and she said she was she would go talk to her husband about that. Anyway, he went back into the office, he wrote a report, and he sent them a letter. They get up there, they laugh at the letter. Okay, I called the health inspector office four more times in 2022, last year. I called, I can't remember all the dates, but for sure, the 16th of August was one of the times I called. On December, the... I got the date say, let me tell you, because I want everything clear. Mm -hmm. On December the 9th, I called back the same training inspector and asked him if he could do anything about it. He said, well, he's no longer training and he's not even working there anymore. So he can't help. But then he said, well, I'm going to get a number for you so you could call him. He called, he did call me back and he gave me this number. And he told me to speak to a Mr. Gaskin down at the unit or your units give to some polyclinic. What number did he give you? G give, say the number so people know the number that he gave you. It is a cell phone number. Oh, okay, okay. It, okay. Yes, it's a cell phone number. Okay, okay. So I, I called Mr. Gaskin and I spoke to him. I gave him all the information, as I told you. I told him that every time I, may, I find a solution, they do something so that I got to look for another solution. Mm -hmm. It's like hell after hell after hell. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, they send out so much water now that my downstairs retainer wall is full of effervescence. The water is building up behind there. I was down here now like 17 years and never saw anything like that. That wall was painted and never had effervescence. Now it is full of effervescence. Anyway, I spoke to Mr. Gaskin on the 9th. He told me, go to your lawyer, get the lawyer sent a letter, and I have a copy of the, the, the letter that the lawyer sent me. Okay? Mm -hmm. I had to read it and read it and what's not before he sent off to my brother and his wife. So I went then to the lawyer on the 12th of December. I explained the situation. She even spoke to Mr. Gaskin on the phone. 
Okay, she he told her what to do, and he also said to send a letter to the Saint Eunice Gibson Polyclinic to the doctor there. Okay, now by me see it was the twenty second or so. My brother and his wife got the letter. She did not. The lawyer did not send off the letter to the clinic until because her office closed the twentieth of December. But my brother got his letter the 22nd round there. And her office reopened on the 10th of January. So I was calling her, I asked her, she sent off a letter and I had owed her money because I didn't want with enough money as she was closing. So she said, well, don't worry, don't worry, hey, when I reopen, you can come and pay me. So I went to her office and I paid her the money and I asked her, she sent off a letter to the clinic. She said, well, yes, she now sent it off to the clinic and give it a couple of days or a week or so, I think. I called Mr. Gaskin throughout January. He said no letter came there. Check, there's no letter. January, like, January, no January right now, this year, 2023. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, this January. Yeah. Okay. So I asked, I called her again. I asked her, "Did you? Are you sure you sent off the letter?" She said, "Yes, it should be there by now, unless it get misplaced." But I sent off the letter. I called him. I kept calling her. I asked him if he get it. He said no. Anyhow, I started to get fed up because no one came. I'm still dealing with water. Or oh, and then I didn't even mention the stench. My brother has a pit toilet. Not a water toilet, a pit toilet, but he has a water toilet run to this this space. So all the scent, when the water go in that hole, I am getting. Okay? I have not opened my front barrel window for five years. And I never said anything about it because I said I am not making any waves. I'm not making a noise. I ain't got nothing to say to them. I can keep that window closed. But the water now, they're sending down so much water because I, from what I understand, I was told I'm not going to call her name because she's not going to like that. She said all the water that is coming from the sink, the bathroom, and the washing machine is going the same well. So that's extra water going down there now. So now my downstairs stink. Mm -hmm. You cannot walk downstairs unless you have a mask on. It is stink. And I kid you not. All of this time... I kept my window closed and the scent wasn't even downstairs. But now that they're sending out extra water, down there is tank. Anyhow, I called grass tax the 20th of January this year. And I could send you a voice note of that because I went on the radio, I went to the site and I I um, recorded it. Because how things are happening right now, they're trying to prove me to be a liar. Okay, so I called Brass Tax the 20th of January and I spoke to Barry. Barry said it is an environmental health risk. You need to get something done, but that go to your representative. I must say I did not go to the representative. Okay, I was waiting on the health inspector to come and do his job, which they did not. Anyway, I called him throughout January. He's still saying the letter ain't get there. So I called in, I called back brass tax February the 9th, okay, and I spoke to Barry, to, not Barry, sorry, to David Ellis. David Ellis said basically the same thing that Barry said, and he then told me to write a letter to the Ministry of Health. Again, I did not do it. You understand? Mm -hmm. I did not do it. And there's a lot of reasons why I didn't do these things, but I will tell you that in the, the, other, the other story. It's a lot. Anyway, when I put down the phone for speaking to with Mr. Ellis, I decided let me call and say for here, Mr. Gaskin. I called Mr. Gaskin and <clears throat> he was angry. You understand? He said, oh, I was waiting for you to call me. Come, let me talk to you. And he went in his office. He said, somebody tell me, somebody that don't even work here, call me and tell me that you call the radio program and tell lies. Huh? Now, why would I have to call a radio program and tell lies when this is something that I'm living through? Huh? What lies? I sent Mr. Gaskin the video of the water coming down, clear, clean water, as though they are just left in the water, up there running, the pipe running, and going over the business all through the day. This water will come down. You understand? There ain't no lies. I ain't have to tell the lies. I give you videos and I give you pictures. What lies? 
Okay? So I directed him then to go and listen to my contribution upon brass tacks because what he was speaking of was the call I made in January because he didn't know that I just done put on the phone speaking to Mr. Ellis, Mr. Ellis. So he said, and you tell lies and I'm going to send Mr. Ellis an email and let him know that you're telling lies. So I said, well, what lies? I'm living through this. What lies would I have to tell? Anyhow, draw a little later in the conversation because we spoke that day for over an hour. You hear? So when he calmed down then, he tell me, well, I ain't getting a letter. So there nothing that I could do. Oh, and I neglected to say something. I think it was early January, but I called him to ask him if he had received the letter. He said no. And he can't do nothing until he get the letter. Anyway, apparently then he ended up here in Church Gap. And he was calling me, because I was at work, he was calling me to ask me where I live so that he could go and visit the area. That's what I want to get clear. He did come, but I was at work. And I had spoke to him the morning, but he didn't tell me he was going to come out. So when I put down my phone, I didn't look at my phone till lunchtime. So when I was trying to call him back then, and he did answer, he said, well, it's too late now because I'm not there anymore. And if you didn't answer your phone, I would get to do it. So he would have come, okay? Anyhow, <clears throat> back to the day I was talking to him. So he was angry with me, and he did tell me, go and get the letter and bring it. So he told me to go to the lawyer, get a letter, and bring it. So I did that the Friday. I went to the lawyer. I told her the clinic saying they did not get the, the letter that you sent, and I need another one. I need a copy. And I walk into him myself. We spoke in there for a long time. He walked me to the desk of Mr. Christopher Boyne, and he put the letter on the desk along with the notes. Anyhow, that was the, the 10th of February. Let me make sure, because I got the notes here. I got everything here. 10th of February. Yes. Right. On the 15th of February, Mr. Christopher Boyne, an inspector, came to visit my property. He had, along with him, nine students from the Ross, I think it was nine, a good few of them, those students from the Ross University, and two other good gentlemen, I can't remember who he said it was. I showed him the problem areas, I showed him where the water is coming down, I sent the videos and the photos and what's not to him, showing him that I'm not making this up. He got out of that. I walked him around to my tank and my water line, and I told him, I also want my water to be tested because I find that if anybody drink directly from my pipeline, they get sick. And this wasn't happening now. I have not drank from my pipeline for over seven years, maybe more than that. I had my tank in 2016. Mm -hmm. So something looking like, 10 years, we have not drank water directly from this tap. You hear from the pipeline. So people came here, they would take a sip, instantly get sick. My daughter was constantly sick, belly hurt, nausea, everything. So eventually I decided, you know what, something ain't right. Let me tell this child to drink water that's boiled. So I started boiling the water and one of us wasn't sick anymore. And then I decided, you know what, I ain't even drinking this water. We start buying bottled water. Okay? So he was supposed to come there to, to also test my water. Because I believe that they cut my pipe out there because my water line ran through their yard. Because as I say, when this first started, when all of these started building what's not, everybody used to get along. We used to get along. But I believe they cut my pipe and just leaked their toilet water into my pipe. The mason gets sick, a lance was here, they drank the water. No, I did not know. Just in case you all think it, I did not know. It's only after I realized that they drank the water, I say, you know what? Something definitely is wrong with this water. Anyhow, I will get back to that. So the, so wait, wait, wait. So you're saying wait. Mm -hmm. So you're saying the lance of drank the water? I had a lance of here. Um in 2020. So did he get sick? So, okay, so did the person that drink... So, so, mm -hmm. so, did the per so did the person that drank... Did the land surveyor, when he drank the water, was he sick? The guy, yes, he had drank the water. And when I come out, so then I saw him by the pipe. So I was like, you drink the water? And he said, I just take a little sip. But I just, I feel so good. I, he was thinking he hungry. 
You understand? Mm -hmm. So I chalk it to, to something is wrong with your plate. But for real, I had a mister here working, and he would usually, I would give him water, bottle water, whatever. But he would go and wash his hands and then drink some water, and that I did not know. It's only after I told him this year that I am getting this water test day, he said, well, I had drink this water, and I did real, feel real sick, so something wrong with this water. It's true. You understand? Mm -hmm. So it ain't like I knew because if I had seen them, because I don't follow them up and down, when they're doing the work, they're doing the work. So it's only after he uh, really said that then that's when I decided that I am really going to get this water testing. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Look, it, 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 it's been a lot. So, okay, so you, so you, you, know, you, you wait, really wait, wait, wait. So you, prof mm -hmm. you had the water tested by, by professionals? I can get, I can get around to that. I come into that story now. Okay. Okay, I come into that story. Let me just finish off. So I brought the Mr. Boy inside the house to take him downstairs. So he was, he was, cause I put on a door to block the stairs so that the sink can't come from down there, uh, here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so up on the upper level. I opened the door and as he was talking to me going down, he smelled it. And he was like, oh, oh, I see you smell it, right? He said, uh huh. I said, okay. He walked down, he finished talking, he asked me questions, he went and he, he, he took the pictures of the wall downstairs, the effervescence on the wall. He came back and he faced right I said, oh, you, but you, you, you get the scent though. He said, yes, I can smell it. I said, okay. So then I opened the windows to let India get some air. Anyway, he came back upstairs, he stood, he stood outside, I asked him, so what is next? What is going to happen next? Mr. Boy, look at me, tell me he don't know. You understand? He don't know. <laughs> so I smile. I said, okay. Because I already know how the, the, the amount of stress that I get dealing with this problem, I could tell you, I knew that nothing was going to happen. You hear? Nothing was going to happen. Anyway, he came then the 21st of February to test the water. Now, this is what happened. Let me see if I can find the message to tell you. He called me. He messaged me a day. And he told me that a Miss Watts is going to come and test the water, just to direct her to me. And this is the reason why I like to use text. Mr. Gaskin was trying to shame me the other day, telling me, oh, put money on your phone, keep money on your phone so you can call the people and all sorts of things. But I'm embarrassed. I just left my phone so, so that you could text me for a reason. So he said, he sent a message to me. This is Mr. Boyne. He sent a message to me. It was actually 20th. Yes, the twentieth. He said, yeah, Miss Watts will call you tomorrow morning to come and do the water sampling. So just guide her to you when she makes contact tomorrow. I said, Okay, thanks. Then the twenty first, they a question when the water was supposed to be sampled to be tested. He said, Good morning. I'm going to come around lunchtime and do this water sampling myself. There was a hiccup with the organization of the roads and sample areas this morning. So he can come and do it himself. So all of a sudden now he can come and do this sampling himself. I ain't saying that he do anything or he ain't do anything, but I just found it a bit strange. And as I said, how things was working against me throughout this process, I was not surprised when he called and tell me that he got to come and do it himself. Everything from there was seen fake and shitty. Here, something ain't right. Anyhow, he came, he took a sample from the direct pipeline, he took one from the water tank, and he took one from the house. Okay, I called him after a week or so, asking if he get my any information. He said no. He told me, I asked him if he spoke, I mean, I told this and nobody spoke to my brother or my sister lawyer, you know, at all. I asked him if he got time to, if he had time to speak with my brother and sister-in-law. He said no. He waited for the water results. I don't see why. And then he was speak to them. No, I don't have my brother's number. No, I don't have my sister-in-law's number. However, at one point in time, I know she used to work in at a school in Strathclay, St. Michael. I gave Mr. Gaskin, no, I gave Mr. Gaskin that information. He said he called, they said that she no longer works there. I told them that my brother does work for Cole Williams, uh, Kendall. And even if they didn't know, they could have called Cole Williams and asked a question. They could call the office and ask a question. You understand? Nothing was done. I can't tell you up to this day that anybody went and speak to my brother. 
You understand? Yeah. Beats went by up to this day. Nobody ain't call me back and tell me that they speak to my brother or nothing. Mr. Gas can call me about three weeks ago and tell me then that the results came back and conclusive and that he can send somebody again to retest it. So I say, you know what? Don't bother. I am going to sort that problem myself. I'm going to remove my line from through their yard and I'm going to run it around so that I can have clean water. And I'm going to empty my tank and I will refill it. Now, the area where his base water was coming around, I had to fix that myself. Okay? I paid somebody to fix that for me. By pipe and I fixed it. And I could send you the videos of how he, had, my brother had the pipe connected so that the water will come down on me. It will appear if it's passing or going down, but no, it was coming down on me. And the reason why I saw this is because I saw I, a day I was outside cleaning and I saw this water pouring coming down. So it was hidden in between some banana trees. So I cut down all the banana trees and that's how I come to see this water running coming down. Okay, and up to now, no one has come to me to check and see if he could get a proper toilet to see how my downstairs stand. Nothing. I still here living in a septic tank. You understand? So okay, so okay, long, so so long, long, long story short, regarding just regarding the water testing, your water was never tested. Pardon? Your your water then you never had water tested because if he said it was inconclusive and then you said that you're going to reroute everything and you're going to mm -hmm. fix it yourself your water actually was never tested then you never had your water tested to get results of the if it had in all kind of you know bacteria That's and mm -hmm. they said it was tested he came and he did the sampling on the 21st of february but you I, but, but you say you said it was inconclusive Yes, yes. Um, and Mr. Gaskin called me then and he told me it was inconclusive, but they are going to send someone to probably the same Mr. Boeing to take some more samples. And I said, don't bother. Right. So you so, if, so, so in essence, it was never really tested then. In essence. But, in oh. opinion, I don't even believe. Because let me tell you something. See, I was speaking to my boss there and my boss said, you don't think that you should try and get a private um, company to like, test you on. I thought that's what you were going to do. Me. Yeah, I she thought that's what you... All over. Yeah. No one else does it but the best... The, what is the Santos best of lab? Oh, I see. You understand? Because... And I, then I turn and I call them. And I get this... this, this, this um, I just get this feeling like if my name in there somewhere... Because I asked her, um, is there any way that I can get my water tested privately? I mean, like, y'all send up someone to come and test it, you know, and without me having to go through the, the inspectors. And she took, she said she got to go ask the question. She took my, my number, and I gave her my name, Joelle. And she made a remark. I, can't, I don't want to say it, but I could tell you what I hear, but I can't prove that that's what it is. But something is very fishy. Something is very fishy. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. So I don't even believe my water was tested. So I told him, you know what? Because I realized that there is there is something behind the scenes going on. It ain't, it ain't pun up and up. This ain't, ain't honest and, and, and clean work. Something is going on. Anyhow, I decided I'm going to now change my take my water from through their line, their um yard, and I will rewrote my water. You understand? From that time till now, not another call to hear if my brother was spoken to, if they reached anybody, nothing. But somebody bigger helping them. You, you mean, understand? You see, somebody bigger. Where you are, I find that that is a normal thread that runs through everything. When I talk to people, the injustices are so great things that are allowed to happen happen such with such in, 
it's such indignity that people start to believe that the people that they're fighting against are connected to higher ups. But it's sometimes it's not that way. But but you you tend you tend to start to think like that, and you become paranoid because you you wonder how could this be allowed? How can this happen? And you start to think, well, does he know someone in high places? But usually it's just that things are so lax and lax. So there's a, things are so not policed, not 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 regulated. Barbados is a place, it's like the wild, wild west in, in many instances, but it but it leaves you to start to second guess yourself to think, well, maybe th these people are all after me. You, you start to start you start to go what you are saying is something that I hear from almost everyone that is being vilified in Barbados. I they they get to that point that they think, okay, the whole world is against me. He, he, this person that I am fighting against, they're connected. And it's like every place I go is like a roadblock. You feel as though there's a roadblock. So it's something normal. Mm -hmm. It's something normal that happens. It's a frequency that is established there in Barbados where people, no matter how much they cry out, you, you don't get help. You, you're not getting help. But you see, the thing that got me to about this thing, on Instagram, I read a article there from Barbados today. This lady in St. Michael, Blackwell area, she, her foul pens affecting a primary school. Mm -hmm. Apparently, the school did not even contact the lady. They just called the newspaper. I tried calling the nation. You hear? No one would take the story. Mm -hmm. Well, I did mention other things that happened, and the lady that I emailed, she said, "Well, this seems to be more. It will seem to be more like a he said, she said, and it goes further into the family issue on this thing." And I tell she, "Okay, fine." But this is a water issue here that I'm dealing with, and stench. And this ain't nothing that made up, because if you come in my house and you go downstairs. Especially early in the morning before you open that door, don't there stink. They're not hiding that. But, They're not likes to be so, told that. But let me ask you a question: Are there? Are, mm -hmm. are they, they must be connected to the, the to the regular lines where you get a water bill, and, and water is so expensive in Barbados. How how can they even even? get a bill even do that because it's cost if they leave their their water pipes open all day to bother you their bill must be horrendous their water bill must be high i do not know how it's happening but i can show you the videos i can definitely post these videos to you yeah 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 i will show you the videos and this water was clean clean, clean exactly clean. so that means that they leave a pipe open and just have it running all yes. day so they, you they, understand? But let me tell you about these people. My sister is no longer living there right now, next door, because her house was supposed to be repaired, but so she moved out. But before she moved out, some year, sometime last year, maybe was getting water problems because St. Andrew always got water issues. My sister filled her tank the night when the water came on. By morning, her tank was empty. Somebody went and opened the tap for my sister's tank and let the water run because they wanted the water to come by me. Mm -hmm. That's after I sent the inspector the first time in 2021. Oh, yes, it was in 2021. That's after, is it? Let me just tell you. I sent the first inspector in 2021. No, this happened last year early. They opened the, my sister's tank and let the water came down by me. Then the stair by the house and pushed down the barrels that they had water storing in so that it could come down. So, wait, so, wait. so this, this, this water is from the Barbers Water Authority or this is rainwater that they're, that they're discarding like that? Where's, where? At that point in time, I'm more sure it will have to be when the water came back on, they catch the water and they send it down by me. My sister, the one, the water that was in my sister's tank for sure was water from Waterworks from Barbers Water Authority that she filled her tank with. By morning, she had not a drop of water. One of the two of those, I can't prove it, but she knows also. She knows. Because when she called me, she said, listen, I fill up my tank, turn off this water, and now this morning the tank is empty. Because she even had to come by me to get water. You hear? 
purpose work. Mm-hmm. Everything is purpose work. People out here believe that I am the noise maker because I'm outspoken. I tell you what I got to tell you. Right. And when I don't tell you, I check it for you no more. But my sister-in-law and my brother, huh, the two of them culprits, they make easy. You hear? After this interview, I am going to tell you everything I have been through with these people. I have a daughter who's 29 years old that I don't even speak to now because of the things she joined with my brother and my sister-in-law to say that I did to her. Your own, your, me, your own daughter? Wait, wait, wait. Your own daughter? Yes, please. But I don't blame her because my brother wife manipulated her brain when she was very small. She was in my child's ears for years telling my daughter I don't like her, she don't get treated properly, all sort of things. This went to the child care board and she put me in the child care board twice. You hear? And I have evidence. I have proof. You hear? This is something I just saying to scandal nobody name. Mm-hmm. This is things I've been through. You hear? I am one angry person and I doing this to relieve me from being from doing something that I don't want to do. Right. Because the anger is building up. You understand me? Yes. And when you are against a rock, you hear me? Sometimes you do you slash show and you do some things. Right. And I'm just talking this out before I get myself in trouble. Right. You hear? Right. It hasn't been easy. This is twenty three years of stress that I've been dealing with under the two of those. You hear? This in the lies. This in the lies. Mm-hmm. I, I understand you. I, I, I really do understand you. I, I, I do understand what it is to be crying out and people just do not believe you. And, you know, the people who are the culprits just go about like normal. I, I do understand how it happens. It's like I said, there's a strange frequency in Barbados that allows that. And that's something that, you know, I don't know how you can work with it, but it, it is there. It is something that's there that happens. Wickedness, wickedness, yeah. pure evil. Yeah, but it's, it's it's something that is not is almost normal. You 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 almost have to get to love it and get to understand it and get to and live with it because you can't. I don't know if you can fight. Can't you do that? You can fight it. I don't know. I don't know. No, honestly, it's like this. I tell myself, forget about it. You know. Just yeah, exactly. What do I live? Because they can't do it forever. Exactly. So but they do. Happen and I can get some relief. No, you don't. <laughs> you think that. You think that. But it never happens. No, I hope so. I pray for it to happen. Oh. Hearing the calls come true, pun, VOB and what's not, nobody from the Ministry of Health did not even try to get in contact with They me. don't care. I mean, again... I should have gone to the representative, but right there and then, I don't even think anything can happen. And that's another story for another time also. I don't even think anything would happen. Right. So, in the meanwhile, I got to keep my barrel window closed. I have to put on a mask when going downstairs because I live, I actually live in an air septic tank. Okay, so, so, so if the water is coming from his septic tank, from his well... So mm-hmm. fe- feces, mm-hmm. so feces, you have feces coming through also? No, it is just the stench. Oh. Because you see, I, I, I'm in the bottom. Mm-hmm. So it, the fact that he has like just a hole dug, a pit toilet, and then the water from the water toilet, no. Mm-hmm. Every time he flushes, because there were like seven of them up there in that house, right. or six. So you know, all that water then come in, plus two, they deliberately running extra water from the bathroom, the, the kitchen, the washing machine. So all that is going into that, that, um, the that well. Yeah. That hole. Yeah. And it's seeping through the earth because I'm in the bottom. So I get in all of that. Right. Okay. And he big and nasty because he's worked someplace where he could get blocks and build a proper well. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So okay, let, let me ask you one. Okay, this man does, mm-hmm. Let me ask you one last question because we are going into almost forty minutes, and my this particular system is going to run out of space. But let me ask okay. you a question. Okay. We can we can we can have a part two and a part three and a part four and a part five. It doesn't matter. We can always talk, you know. But um, I would like to tell you about the things that I've been going through from when my daughter was small. I would like I want to get that out there. Okay, so we, that that let's do that in another part of this of oh, the interview. No problem. Uh, but I, mm-hmm. I, I, I stopped you to ask you a question. Now I don't, I don't remember. It slipped my mind. Okay, well, yeah. Well, yeah. But uh, yeah, the, the whole matter is that 
Oh, you talked about your brother. Well, oh, yes. What I wanted to ask you was, can't, do you have the wherewithal that you can move? Do you have, like, money? I, that, that's going to be too expensive right now. I'm not putting myself in no kind of debt right now. Okay. Honestly, okay. no, I refuse to move. Okay. I refuse to move when there's anything to be done on this land, like pay for last severe or whatever. It's me who does do it. Mm -hmm. When my father refused to pay for this land, it was me who paid for it. Right. I have my receipts. Okay. So, oh, yeah. so if, if, if you if you the if you're the one who paid for it, so so you you saved it from the government. You mean like foreclosing on it? Is that what you're saying? Well, not not really. My dad, after my mom died, he would lack when it comes to paying it. So I would tear one of his checks and put money with it and go and pay the loan. Okay. Because it was a loan. Oh, I see. I but see. The, 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 some of the issue come with the fact that I built down here. My brother built his house first. He was opening the house first. So he built next door to my dad's house. That's like where my sister lived, because my sister and everything in my dad's house. Mm -hmm. So he built next door there. Now, behind here where I was with Bush, because this is mainly like, I would say agriculture land, but I built here. Okay? But he built his house first. So he said... Um, he written out this house that he in, and he was going to build down here. So I tell him, no, you can't get to two whole spots. The rest of we go out somewhere to live too. You understand? So it built animosity between us. He walked, okay, he tell people that I, I want one all, but he don't do anything. You understand? Yeah. Let's leave that part. Okay, we we yeah we gonna leave that. Let's leave that part for. No, we can't leave. It's it's on there, but we can talk about that on another show. But let's finish up. We're going into forty minutes, so you are still living in hell. Nothing has changed. You are still living with the stench. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing has changed. Nothing at all. Wow. Okay. Okay. All right, and you can't, you cannot afford to move. You that that would be an expense. No, I, no, I wouldn't even want to move. I should not have to move. Okay. I mean, lawyers tell me move, but I'm not moving. Okay. Okay. I'm not moving. And and there's no getting through to your brother because this is bad blood that has been going on for too long. There's no getting around that. Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. Okay, so you can't, you can't, you don't want to move. You can't move because you don't want the bill. You don't want to move because it is your home. you you. There's okay. no. There's no getting around to reconciling with your brother. That's bad blood that has gone on for too long. So that's that's a. It don't make no sense me even trying to get to. You know, re reconcile with my brother because I don't think it's going to happen. Then, as I said, the next story, I'm going to tell you everything. Okay. Well, 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 okay. To do. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to hear that story. But in this story, is there any way you can buy, like, extra, like, like, like soy to tamp down, tamp down, tamp down around you to reinforce and then do more? Is there more that you can do in, in, in terms of? Like sucking up that water, like maybe filling up like gaps and no, mm -mm. Oh. because I I already did the gutter to run away with the extra water that he's sending down. Mm -hmm. But you see the fact that I am below the road. But oh, let me ask a question: Is the gutter is the gutter like uh, lined with cement or is just just uh, just a yes, yes. Oh, oh, it's lined with cement? Oh, okay, good, good, good. Mm -hmm. Good. I tell you, as soon as I made a, I make a solution, them just do something different. They just do more. Right, right. That's just it. it, it so, I so there's, a, there's an environment. There's an environment. But there's an environmental. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. there's an environmental issue that has been going on now for years. But in terms of yes. your, in terms of your health, have you got? Have you had a particular cough? A particular sinus problem? Have you had any problems? Well, any yes, skin problem? Any skin? Says, never had sinuses before. I cannot go downstairs unless I put on a mask because it's made me sick. My daughter used to be sick on a regular. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here. Okay. Oh no, that's the reason why she don't really open her bedroom windows because she's always. So sick. there's no rash on your body. No. You, you don't have any rash on your body, like emphysema. No. no. Oh. Mm -mm. Oh. Oh. Mm -mm. Oh. It, it, 
It's hard, to be honest. Okay. But I dealt with it for as long as I could deal with it. I was not making any waves, but there is, they insisted on doing more and more and okay. more. So I might as well fight too. Exactly. So this is part one. This is part one. The environmental and the health issue is part one. We're going to come back with Joel for parts two and part three. And we'll hear more of this story. But Joel, I want to thank you for being on Naked Departure Radio. And I look forward to talking to you. I look forward to talking to you again to hear more about you know what goes on there because I talk about it all the time too. I'm sure you've heard about me. I talk about it all the yeah. time, and people always think that if you're telling the truth, you're lying. For some reason, Bajans think that the truth is a lie. But we, we, we a lie is so easy. Yeah, yeah, they, they always, no, yeah, they always, yeah, they always think, they, they, they always think, they always think that way that if you're telling the truth, they'll, they'll turn it into a lie. They will, turn, they will say it's a lie, and then it'll get believed, and you, and you never get believed because your truth becomes a lie. But um, yeah, I, yes. I understand how it works. I understand. Thank you, Joel. Thank you. No, you're this is, welcome. This is Thank naked, you also. This is Naked Departure Ready. This is Sherry Veronica.